Caliwa Atrobatum in North Hampshire is so much more than the Roman town for which it is best known. Around 50 years before Claudius's legions set foot on British soil in AD 43, the Atrobates tribe settled here, laying down their late Iron Age foundations for the future Roman town. Forming two rings of defensive earthworks, some of which are still clearly visible, the best examples of which are seen here along this footpath running from the car park, here on the east side directly behind the amphitheatre and also over there in those trees in an area known as Rampier's Copse. Now I'm standing in the area, the approximate area of the filled in Roman defensive ditch or foss as it's known and out there in the field some 50-60 meters are the footprints of the Iron Age defensive ditch or one of them. Also coming across this field is our Roman road which we followed in the first part of this series, road number 42A. Coming from that area over there it sort of dog legs across and then straightens up a bit and it comes across the Iron Age ditch across our Roman ditch here all the way from Winter Bulgarum, modern day Winchester. This drone shot which I took in June during a dry spell shows the road entering the city through the south gate as a parch mark. Whilst outside the outer southern Iron Age ditch is also represented. And from the outer defences, the road then passes beneath my feet and enters Kaliwa through the remains of the southern gate. So the hugely impressive remains of the southern gate here at Kaliwa. And if we have a look firstly on the eastern side, let's have a look at the wall. Well, the wall is pretty much fully extent in its lower courses. This is the outer curtain wall as it would have swept round to this extent. It's crumbled away and deteriorated on the southern side. If you look on the western side, we've still got a bit of that, so we've still got the extent here, but we've got a bit of the curtain wall as it would have curved round to form the main southern wall going southwest. If we walk into our city, we've got in front of me here the remains of the gatehouse or gate tower. Now, excavations here will reveal that the foundations here are made of brick and not flint as the walls are made of. And that suggests an earlier build. It also suggests that when Caliva's initial Roman defences were built, in around 200 AD, these gate towers were built to accompany the earthen banks which stood where our stone walls are today. On the west side we've got the remains of the tower here as well and if I stand back a little and give you an idea of the width 
of the gate tower. Now it's not very wide. It would have been a single track or carriageway here and there's a reason for that. The south and north gates were smaller than the west and east gates and I'll explain why when we get to the west gate. But here we have the impressive remains of Cleaver's southern gateway. Now I'll start my exploration moving west along the southern wall and if we just pan along isn't that mightily impressive so looking at our wall firstly let's look at the parapet up there on the eastern side that's hugely provocative it would have been standing probably another couple of meters higher coming out a bit wider here and you can almost imagine a sentry pacing up and down one of the probably auxiliary troops rather than a legionary troop here at Kaliwa. Moving west we'll look at the wall itself and its makeup as you can see it's built in the traditional style of stone in this case flint because it's locally available and then we've got stabilizing courses but what's not traditional here is that most roman walls use courses of stone then tile or brick then the stone then the brick etc here we haven't got brick we've actually got limestone and it's thought that that is because Kaliva or Kaliwa was viewed as a more prestigious project and so being more expensive than tile or brick which was readily available at the time in the sort of mid to late third century it was built using limestone so what we possibly have here is a much more prestigious creation in this wall than a lot of other roman construction around britain Let's turn to the map to get an idea of the layout of things here at Kaliwa and we'll plot features chronologically. Now, as I said earlier, the Atrebates tribe founded Kaliwa as a major settlement between 10 and 20 BC and it's thought that defensive ditches were immediately constructed, although there is some conjecture as to whether the inner ditches were built in 43 AD as a countermeasure against potential Roman hostility. Here are the positions of those earthworks with the boulder green depicting those which still exist today. Now, hostile or not, Kaliwa came under Rome's control just a year after the invasion in AD 44. Initially, the occupying forces used the existing Iron Age defences, laying out their town more or less upon the previous alignment. But by the end of the second century, the classic Roman grid street layout had been laid and breached the eastern inner ramparts. So earthen ramparts were soon constructed, topped by a wooden palisade and timber gatehouses placed at the four compass points, although these were quickly replaced by stronger ones built from flint and brick. To accompany this, a double ditch was dug around the perimeter, encircling the city to the length of a mile and a half and forming the shape that's visible today. By the late 3rd century, the Roman Empire was a troublesome place, and it was decided to improve defences at Caliwa once more. In around 270 AD, the stone wall, the remains of which can be seen today, was constructed upon the existing early 2nd century Roman earthen ramparts, with the perimeter ditch increased greatly, this time a single affair but up to 15 metres wide and 4 metres deep. The map shows the wall with eight gates now and the perimeter ditch in yellow. Again, the bolder areas indicate where the ditch is still extent. Having already explored the south gate, I'm going to head clockwise to have a look at the rest of Kaliwa's defences. So turning west from the south gate, we're going to head north along the southwest wall and the western side of Kaliwa depicts the least visible remains of the wall. It's very much damaged, collapsed. 
and even disappeared in many areas. And this is one of them. But right here we have a wonderful stream coming out of the city, which gives evidence, if it was here then, that they had a natural water source. If I can move in a bit closer, and you can see it. You can see it bubbling out of the, the ground there, look. I'm wondering if this area, when the, the town was here, whether this was culverted to come out of the town. Obviously there's no way to find out today. And look at the water, it's crystal clear. And that's because it's been filtered through all the chalk. I returned to the same stream some weeks later during a dry spell. And whilst moving through the undergrowth, I made an interesting discovery. But I've just seen something in here and it's piqued my interest. So if we clear away, ow, just stunned my face. Is that clay pipe there where the water comes out? Is that Roman? Could it possibly be Roman? Well, here on the southwestern wall, we've got another one of those trees growing directly out of the wall, almost identical to the other one a bit further south down there that we saw. And it, it just exudes atmosphere, doesn't it? Imagine a foggy night down here, very spooky. Now, it's also here that we get enough of great opportunity to access the Roman Foss defensive ditch. And that's just here to my left. So if I pass these tree stumps, and we go down this footpath and we climb into the ditch. So let's get to the bottom. So we are in the bottom of the southwest defensive ditch. And you can see the the bank there on the east side rising to probably about eight foot from where I'm standing and then about nine or ten foot that side. I don't know if you can see it on the camera but you've got the lovely sort of bowl shape of the defensive ditch and there it is going south and remember when Kaliva was an operating town this ditch would have been much deeper, probably four, five, six feet deeper, maybe even more, and the bank there much higher. Now, if I climb this footpath, uh, go through this kissing gate. So we just had a quick look in the, the Roman ditch, and if I follow this footpath, now over to those trees there, it'll give me a great opportunity to get into an Iron Age ditch. Right, so let's just get through this kissing gate. Ah, brambles, my arch enemy. So, we're dropping down into this Iron Age ditch. And this is the area known as Rampier's Copse. And the first thing, first thing I notice, let's just go over here, is that it's much wider than the Roman one. Once again, more than likely much, much deeper with much higher earthen banks. Look at all these little puffball mushrooms everywhere. There's hundreds of them. 
there we are this is a relatively clear area so you can see the west bank there and the east bank rising here and remember this predates the roman occupation by a good 50 years and it carries on going that way to the southeast and this is probably which well, it definitely is the only chance you'll get to actually get in any of the iron age ditches and it's probably the best example also So I've turned the corner onto the west wall now and what we have in front of us is a remarkably well preserved section of stone and this can only be one of two things one very fortuitous that it's been protected all these years or two it's been reconstructed I know for a fact that there were parts of the wall reconstructed in the 1950s and this could possibly be one of them because it's perfect it's absolutely beautiful if it isn't reconstructed it's even better because that is 1600 years old or older a brief return to the map now to show one my location of which i am approximately here and two ahead of me are the two western gates which can be found here So I'm now approximately at the point where the southern of the two western gates would have been. Remember, there were two gates on the western wall. And it's hard to pinpoint exactly where that gate would have been because it's thought that it was blocked up long before the town became abandoned. Now, as luck would have it, we have a fallen tree exactly where I want to have a look. However... In the best traditions of Pathfinder, I shall venture forth and see what I can see. So we're climbing towards the west wall here. And I've tried to pinpoint as best I can that this is the area of the southern west gate. And my reasoning being... Now, if we look at the wall there through those trees as best you can, there is... A bit of a gap um, there's no prominent gap like at the other gates and like I said before that's because it's thought that this gate was closed down and blocked before the town became abandoned but there's definitely a bit of a gap there and obviously because on this west side the wall is very much decayed and overgrown there's absolutely little to see but there's a definite area where there could be a gap and there's also something else that i want to show you Let's get back down at the bottom of the wall so if i make my way to the defensive ditch the roman one so we have that right here in front of us very shallow at this point if i stood in it you're probably looking at two or three feet if that so if I get to the point where the breach in the wall was, which is approximately here, turn 180 degrees, now this may be just my adult brain, but I'm pretty certain you can see some sort of a causeway going into that ditch. Now bearing in mind this would have been closed down, so the causeway probably unused for quite some time but if I get into the bottom of the ditch on the southern side of it and look pretty much there although it follows the contours of the ditch it's raised for a few feet going that way I don't know wishful thinking maybe Anyway, this this uh, this gate would have led, would have took the road out of Kaliva, Kaliwa, to the town of Soria Dunum, or Old Sarum as it's known today, the town adjacent to modern day Salisbury, and that would have gone across that field, and then taken a dog leg to the southwest.
So coming to the end of our little wooded area, nice and shady and cool, we've got the west wall to my right. To my left, the foss has completely disappeared. It would have been approximately here, totally filled in. No sign of it. Now up here, so if I just get through this gate, is the site of two things. One, it's the corner where the west wall ends. So here's our wall here, disappears, it's down there. And then the northwest wall continues on the other side. If I go just down here and poke the camera through the tree, you can see our northwest wall beginning there. But it's also the site of the western gate the northern western gate so of the two west gates and out of the four main gates north east south west the west and the east were bigger larger than the south and the north so this would have been a double carriageway affair the reason suspected is because this road and today we can see we've still got a footpath following exactly the route would have taken us to Corinium or Sirencester as it's known today. And that was Roman Britain's second largest town behind Londinium. And it's thought because of the importance and the grand status of the place and where the road was taking it, this gate along with the east would have been larger than the south and the north, which went to more minor places. Unfortunately, there's nothing to see, although the foundations are definitely down there under the ground. It was dug some years ago and those same brick foundations were found. So it is there, but unfortunately it's not there for us to see today. But it's also handily marked by a modern gate. Here we can look at another aerial view, this time of the western wall from within Kaliwa. The path on the right of the picture is the modern trackway which bisects the site running from northwest to southeast. And beautifully clear is the western section of the Roman grid road layout, visible as parch marks. It also shows particularly well the two routes heading west out of the city exiting via the southern and northern west gates. The northwest wall, you may have noticed I'm walking on top of it now. That's because we've got private land down there. But the wall here is almost as impressive as it is over there on the southern side. Now I'll take this opportunity in the break in the wall to show you something so if we look down here we have a ditch running parallel to our wall and that can really be only one thing and that's the later late third century roman ditch but it reused the course of the original iron age ditch in this place um, obviously there's little trace if any of that iron age ditch now unless you well dig down basically but if you remember the roman road grid layout system overstretched the eastern iron age defenses and so kaliwa when it was an iron age town was slightly smaller in the east so our iron age defenses would have come along on this exact same alignment and then it would have curved in towards where i'm standing and it would have crossed under the wall here's the wall here and it would have gone into kaliwa and the enclosure of the iron age village or town as it was then would have been slightly further west of the wall which you can see over there so where i'm standing is the point of the iron age inner defensive ditches coming in and enclosing the original town whilst our roman ones dug um, in the early third century and then again in the late third century continue to flank the wall and we've got a good example here no vegetation 
as we've got over there on the west side so we've got a perfect view of the ditch obviously much shallower than it was back in the day but a very very good example and then over there in those trees we have our um iron age uh, outer ditches uh, that's the one by the car park and i'm going to see if i can access that now well i've managed to access the northwest outer iron age defensive ditch i didn't think i'd be able to but i have and it was quite easy to be honest with you i always find these it took to a lot of people it's just a ditch and i understand that but to me I find there's so much more. I mean, the Roman ditches, fosses are impressive. Bearing in mind they are at Caliba, 1700 years old. But this one, bearing in mind it was dug in the, the late first century BC, is over 2000 years old. And obviously at the time, it would have been much, much deeper with higher ramparts either side. But nevertheless, still mightily impressive now literally just a couple of steps from the car park the road cuts through the Iron Age ditch to the the bank running down there it's nowhere near as deep or as impressive as at Rampier's Cops but nevertheless, it's still very, very evident. And let's just cross the road to see if it continues on the other side. Oh, that was a bit steep. So I think it does, but I don't think it's accessible in these bushes here horse yeah it doesn't appear in fact what we've got we've got an extremely high bank here obviously this is ground level we've got a bank raising to about 10 feet there now that is very interesting Looking at LiDAR finder mapping, let's get our bearings. Now, here is the car park. This is the Northwest Iron Age outer ditch, which I'm currently looking at. And if I zoom in a bit to where the road bisects it, I'm in the field here. And by the looks of it, the ditch itself has gone. I'm actually standing upon its filled in surface. But the southern rampart which we just saw, still stands to an impressive height. Now I'm walking along the top of the north wall and we're just about to come up to the north gate. Now the north gate gave access obviously to the north, but to modern Pangbourne towards that way, Wallingford. And the town, what is known today as Dorchester on Thames, or Dorsis, as it was known in those days. Not to be confused with Dorchester in Dorset, which was also a large Roman settlement. We are now halfway around the circumference at the North Gate, which could be found here. So the north gate. So let's drop down. So let's move out of the city slightly to start with. And the first thing I want to point out is this limestone block or limestone blocks because they run the whole length of the base of the wall, jutting out. They're like a curbstone or a plinth. They run all the way around here and they even take the curve there. Uh, you can't go any further, obviously, because we're brambled up there. Um, but what it represents is the actual Roman ground level. So here is 
give or take an inch, the level that people 1700 to 2000 years ago would have walked upon. Over here on the west side of the North Gate, we have this huge great piece of limestone. So what does that represent? Well, let's look over here on the east side and we have a whole course of them. I have absolutely no idea this is the reasoning because for the rest of the wall we have these smaller and thinner pieces of limestone. But there's clearly a whole course of them and I can only assume that they was put there as a reason for um, because it was the gatehouse it wanted to look more grand, more impressive. And then if we move back into the city slightly we'll look at the remains of our gatehouse and you can see the remains of that here or gate tower I should say there's even some evidence of brickwork remember brick was incorporated into the towers because they were built earlier than the actual wall it also gives a perfect outline vegetated up but it gives a perfect outline of the gate tower so running from here all the way along here and then starts heading west I'll get my shadow out of that so you can see the exact shape of the gate tower and then again over here on the east side to a few more courses higher the flint goes up and then if we stand back we could get a good idea of the width remember the single width here not as important as the east and west gate similar to the south gate the single trackway because of the importance of the place that those east and west gates took traffic and if i walk back out of the city again now returning to our Roman ground level, which I'm stood upon more or less, unfortunately we've got the sun facing us from the south. A little bit of an experiment. So if I drop the camera to ground level, so it's pretty much on the ground. And what it shows is the height. So Roman ground level here, and you've got a rise of a good five feet, maybe a bit more, up to the fence there and the rest of the city and what it highlights is over the hundreds and hundreds of years that have passed since Kaliwa was abandoned and the vegetation that's rotted down and created higher ground and it explains why we have to dig down. When we're digging Kaliva for archeological evidence, we have to dig down a good four, five, six feet to access that. And it gives a good example as to the original ground level, today's ground level, and why we have to dig down so far.